Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hi everybody, and welcome to my review of Final Fantasy IV. This game was the first Final Fantasy title Square made for the Super Nintendo. As I'm sure most of you are aware, it was released in North America as Final Fantasy II. Though the game has since been remade, ported, and remastered several times, I'm playing the same old SNES version that I received as a gift I think in 1995 or 96. I loved this game then, and I was excited to see how well this game held up all these years later, more than a few years since my last playthrough. Final Fantasy IV follows Final Fantasy II in terms of story, in as much as it actually has one. Much of this story is pretty character focused, so I'll get a bit more into that as I go through the characters. The main story itself is fairly weak. Don't let Golbez collect all the crystals. Don't let Golbez collect all those other crystals and then defeat the big bad on the moon. The pacing of the story is pretty much perfect, though. The tropes are fairly cliché when looking back from today, but to the best of my knowledge, we hadn't yet seen a story like this in gaming in 1991. The world of this game is cohesive, but also still interesting and vibrant. I especially like how it makes sense that different technologies are available to different people. Baron has the money, so it has the airships and the military might, and attacks other countries when they have resources that it wants. Dwarves have the tanks. The summonable monsters live in a world where the ground is poison. Any really advanced tech comes from the Lunarians and is buried somewhere on Earth. The characters in Final Fantasy IV are a bit of a mixed bag, especially when it comes to more obvious tropes versus interesting new ideas, but everything is overall good. Unlike the first three games in the series, these characters have really specific motivations and many have solid progressions throughout the story. If you want to hear Molly and Ramin's opinions about a couple of these character designs, check out our very old JRPGs and feminism video. There's a link in the description. It's poor quality, it's from like eight years ago, but Molly makes some good points. The heroes in Final Fantasy IV are much stronger than anyone in 1 to 3 in that they have characteristics at all. Cecil has a great arc, and I love how it actually affects the gameplay with his transition from Dark Knight to Paladin. Unfortunately, all of his character arc seems to be in the first half of the game. Once he's a Paladin, it seems like he has nowhere else to go, and no more growing to do. It even sort of seems like he's fairly firm in his decision to reform himself from that scene in his bedroom right at the beginning of the game, when he's in bed in full armor. Speaking of armor, Cecil isn't Amano's most original design, but he still looks cool. Cecil's paladin portrait in the menu is gorgeous in a sort of sensitive soft boy way. The paladin map and battle sprites, though, are not so great. All the Dark Knight designs are cool, though. Kane's frequent switching between good guy and bad guy is mostly pretty good. I like how, even when he's in your party, it's clear that his reason for working for Golbez isn't only the mind control. It's also his jealousy of Rosa. I really wish that were explored more, though. Kane's design and sprites all hit the same beats as Cecil's, with the added confusion of which way his sprite is facing in any particular scene. I don't have much to say about Rosa. She's incredibly bland. Amano's design is gorgeous though, and her sprites all translate that design well. Sid kind of makes a dumb sacrifice, but I like how crotchety he is and how he's always putting Edge to work. I also love how buff he is in his design and how that translates to the sprites. Rydia has a huge, well-paced character arc as a child, and then I love how she swoops in to save the day and then is kind of MVP as an adult. I don't love her design though, I like her muscular thighs, but that's a lot of green. Her sprites are good, even if her child battle sprite is a little confusing. Tella's motivation and memory issues are surprisingly interesting. I like how his memory problems actually affect gameplay. I like how his low MP has a story reason. It's interesting to try and sympathize with a hero who's blinded by rage. His design is fantastic. I like how it's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at, and his sprites make sense of that bizarre design in a really successful way. I used to hate Edward, but then someone pointed out that many Final Fantasies have a weak, playable male character, and how that's kind of inspiring. Even if you're not a superhero, you can do what you can to help. This Spoonie Bard's design is good, if not the most novel and interesting. His sprites translate the design really well. Yang is kind of a dull character. 
he's noble, I guess. He's thick in Amano's design, and I want those pants. Hate the hair, though. Those sprites work well. Pelham and Porum. I can never remember which of them is which, but I think they still have the strongest characterization in the game. I don't love their design, but the sprites are good. We get it, Edge. You're a cool teen. So many shitty teen boy tropes in his character. His design is really cool, though, but... What? Uncle Nothing. White-haired Captain Caveman. Sprite's okay. Now moving on to the villains. Turns out I like the villains that we spend the most time with. I like how Bygan joins the party, and then we get the music and everything, but a clever gamer will notice that there's no room on screen for a sixth party member. The design fits the characters so well. I love all the feathers and his sprites are good. Golbez's motivations are unclear for much of the game. We know we shouldn't let him collect all the crystals, but we don't really know why for most of the game. The reveal that he's Cecil's brother also feels unearned and not explored enough. I do like that he's such a threat, but I don't like that we never really get to fight him. I love the asymmetry of his design, but Dark Knight, Cecil, Kane, and Golbez all kind of blend together. His sprite's good, though. It's fun that there are two back-to-back -back battles against Milan, even if the second battle is a little too simple if you know the undead trick. His design is pretty cool, but nothing stand out. But what is that map sprite? I really like Kainatso's deception, though it would be better if we knew King Baron from before this. His design is genuinely terrifying, and the sprite does a pretty good job of translating that even if it ends up not being quite as scary. The battle against Valvolus is fun, and she seems to be the cruelest and sneakiest of the four fiends, but her design? That's just an almost naked woman with long hair. The sprite works with that design, though. I love Dr. Luge's moral clashing with Rubicant. His design is a bit predictable, but his sprite translates that well. Daddy. I hate late game final villain introductions, and Zemus is no exception. His design is foreboding, but not that interesting. The same can be said of his sprites. In Final Fantasy III, the NPCs were the most interesting characters. That's not the case here in Final Fantasy IV, thank goodness. I don't have much to say about most of them. Anna is kind of a tired trope at this point, of a dead girlfriend helping you move on from beyond the grave, but it wasn't quite as tired in video games at the time that this game was made. It's kind of a fun dynamic that you can't speak to the king of the monsters until you've defeated his wife in combat. But Leviathan himself? He wounded and presumably killed all of the heroes and the captain and crew of the ship they were on. He surely put everyone through considerable emotional distress. And we're just cool with it? With no apology from him? Also, I want to talk about the King of Fabul. His room is directly above the pub in the castle. You know this guy parties hard. I do find it a little odd that he abdicates to Yang at the end of the game, but if it's just so you can party more, I'm okay with it. Some general thoughts about characters in this game. There are a few characters who are Asian, or at least Asian-coded, but most characters look pretty white in this game. It's common for a Final Fantasy game, and really any JRPG, or really almost any game, to not have much diversity in that way. Less than 25% of the playable cast are women. The dialogue is mixed. The localization in this version of the game is a bit rough, and I constantly find myself wishing they could spend more time on this dialogue so that it's fleshed out more. There are good ideas, but the characters don't often have enough time to really talk about things. All in all, the characters we see here are the best yet in the Final Fantasy franchise. I'm really excited that they're mostly all great from here on out. I honestly don't have a ton to say about graphics in this game. Square raised the bar for each game. The jump from NES to SNES really helps here. There are a few spots with some goofy graphics, like when the package opens in Mist, but all in all this is a 5 out of 5. I talked a good deal about character design already. The towns and dungeons mostly have some real character to them, and they're distinguishable from each other for the most part. The monsters, while maybe not as imaginative as they were in Final Fantasy III, are great, and most of the hits and favorites from the series are in this game. I love the designs of the various transportation options, and tying into gameplay a bit, I also love the various limitations that the different transportation options give you. 
Now to talk about sound. I feel it's a little unfair to bring this up, but I can't help but gauge any Final Fantasy score against the looming best in series coming up in just a few years. This is a good score from Uematsu, but it's not his best. The electronic instrument qualities also feel not as strong when you compare them against the same titan of composition written for the same hardware. When it comes to gameplay, map movement and camera aren't an issue until we get to the PlayStation era of Final Fantasy games, so this is all good. The minigames get a perfect score from me because there aren't any. The learning curve feels just right. The one slight issue in the gameplay category is the battles. There are way too many random battles. At least there's basically no grinding necessary in this game. The really big advancement here is the active time battle system designed by Hiroyuki Ito. This feels so much better and more exciting than the battle systems for the previous three games, and it only gets better from here. That is, until we get to Final Fantasy XII, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Comparing how I feel about Final Fantasy IV against how I felt about every game that we reviewed on this channel so far, I give this game a score of 82%. Based on just my scores from each of these categories that I just discussed, I give this game a 93. If I average those two scores together, this game ends up getting an 88%. That's a B+. If you like JRPGs and you haven't given this game a shot, I highly recommend it. It may not be your favorite, but you'll probably like it as long as you don't need flashy modern graphics, and as long as you don't dislike menu-style turn-based battles. I can't speak to any other versions of this game, but if you can get your hands on an SNES cart, do it. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about this game or what you think about my review of it. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments. Give this video a like, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Upcoming things for Remichael. We'll be focusing on media in 1989 very soon, and we're doing it a little differently this time, so stay tuned to see how. I'm also currently playing through Shining Force on the Genesis Virtual Console on Switch. It's my first time ever with this game. I probably won't make a video about it, but I might post about it on Facebook, so follow all of our social media if you want to keep up with that sort of stuff. See you soon, and maintain your groovy selves. Don't let Gulby. Why can't I say his name?